Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are all having a blessed week. I'm having a good one. Hey, listen, I'm going to do a video now that I have not wanted to do simply because I don't want to lose any of my subscribers. You start talking about things that people don't agree with, and the first thing they do is unsubscribe and go away. People, I have enough. I have YouTube gets rid of enough of my subscribers. I don't need you guys, you guys leaving because of something I say. So listen, we're going to do a video on the flat earth. And I'm going to wind up telling you right off the bat, okay, listen to this. I, Pastor Bob, I am not convinced that the world is a flat earth or that we're on a spinning planet in the middle of outer space. I do not know. I have two questions about each theory that no one has been able to explain to me. Now listen, I've got about 15 of you out there. You all know who you are. You comment on every single video. And I'm not going to go through the names because I'll forget somebody and someone, someone will get upset. So listen, every one of you who are my normal people that literally comment on every video, I want you to stop this video. I want you to go get a pencil and paper and I want you to write down these two questions and I want you to give me your opinion in the comment section. And if you're just watching this video, I want you to try to answer these questions that I have because I do not know if the earth is flat or if it is round. But I will tell you right off the bat that I lean, I lean towards the flat earth, but I am not convinced. Up This right here is Gleason's map of the world. This was the accepted map of the world until 1892. All right, now listen. This is the biggest reason why I believe in a flat earth. Because on a round earth that's spinning, aircraft cannot fly. And this is why. A couple years ago, there were two guys. One of them's name was Lewis Cole from England. He has a channel. It's called Fun for Louie. And the other one is another guy named JP from New Zealand. Well, they both took off from Los Angeles in a Cessna that goes 225 miles an hour. They take off from LA. They go to Iceland. They go to Greenland. They go down to Africa, almost clear to the Ukraine equator and they go all the way across Africa and all the way across to some of these islands and they get out in the Pacific and they finally make it to Hawaii and then they had to put in a special fuel tank to go from Hawaii to San Francisco because it was too far. This is what absolutely no one has been able to explain to me and this is the number one problem I have with the round earth. You cannot take off, okay, first of all, listen. The Earth at the equator is 24,800 miles around the equator. The Earth, we have a 24-hour day. That means that at the equator, the Earth is spinning at 1,000 miles an hour. Now, when you go up to like San Francisco, that's like halfway between the equator and the North Pole. Well, the farther up you get, the less ground is going by in that 24-hour day when it spins. So it, at San Francisco, the Earth is only spinning under your feet at about 500 miles an hour. A thousand at the equator, 500 at San Francisco, and almost nothing when you get to the top. So listen, when JP took off, he was the pilot, when he took off from Hawaii and he got up to altitude, well, he's flying to San Francisco. San Francisco is moving away from him at 500 miles an hour. You could never fly to San Francisco to Hawaii in, from Hawaii in a Cessna. Now listen, when a commercial airline takes off, when a commercial airline takes off and it gets up to, leaves Hawaii, gets up to 35,000 feet heading to San Francisco, that plane only goes 550 miles an hour at 35,000 feet. San Francisco is moving away from him at 500 miles an hour. He will never catch San Francisco. 
And some people say, yeah, but the atmosphere goes, spins with the planet. Well, that's fine, but what about when you come from San Francisco to Hawaii? The minute you take off at San Francisco, all of a sudden you've got a headwind of 500 miles an hour because the atmosphere is coming right at your face. Right? This, listen to this. Call up Delta Airlines. Call them up and ask them. You will find that a flight from San Francisco to Hawaii takes the exact same amount of time to the minute as a flight from Hawaii to San Francisco. The only thing that alters that time by 15, 20 minutes is a headwind one way or the other. Can't do it. Now look at this. Let's fly from San Francisco to New York. The minute that plane takes off from San Francisco, New York is leaving it at 500 miles an hour because that's the way it spins. So if you go from New York to San Francisco and you take off, the minute you get up there, San Francisco is coming at you at 500 miles an hour. So you're going to go up, you're going to be flying at 500 miles an hour. San Francisco is coming at you at 500 miles an hour. That means you're going 1,000 miles an hour. That whole thing, that flight should only take maybe two, three hours at the most. But going both ways, the flight time is exactly the same. That is impossible on a flat earth. Absolutely impossible. That's why the biggest thing I have against a round rotating earth is you can't fly. Now, here's a question. I have seen a document, an Air Force document. I've seen this document. And this document is a pilot training manual and in that there's a paragraph and that paragraph says the ground below you is stationary. That's what it says. Now, I know for a fact that they faked the moon landing. People, I've researched that. They faked it. And at the end of this video, I'm going to put a clip where the astronauts are admitting that they faked it. People, when the when the orbiter came down on the moon in 1969, those two men, I don't know if you've ever seen that thing, but it's about the size of a Volkswagen. It's no bigger than my car. But listen, when they came down, they're sitting on top of a 55,000 pound thrust rocket. They're sitting on it, literally. But you know what? They're talking to NASA, you know, this, 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 Eagles landed, and you can't even hear that engine. People, if they were sitting on top of that engine, they would have earplugs in, earmuffs, and you couldn't hear anything, and they couldn't even talk to each other, let alone NASA. And then when you see those pictures of that thing on the ground, there's roughly four to six inches of talcum powder dust on the moon. People, that engine below that thing, it didn't even blow that dust out. It was exactly the same under those thrusters as it was everywhere else. And then when you look at those three big shoes that came out that it landed on, there's not a speck of dust on any of them. Why in the world, if we lived on a round earth in the middle of a universe, why would they have to fake the moon landing? All right. The aircraft flying on a round rotating earth at 24,000 miles an hour at the equator is the one reason, the biggest reason, why I have a problem with the round earth theory. Now, I also have an extreme problem with the flat earth theory that no one has ever been able to explain to me. And this is why I don't know if the earth is flat or round. I have two questions that no one's ever been able to answer. This is the second one. Okay, listen. I have seen this with my own two eyes. It's called a solar eclipse. So listen. Or maybe it's called, I think it's called a lunar eclipse. I get my eclipses wrong. But anyway, listen. I have sat in my driveway and seen the moon up there Moon, Earth, Sun. Sun shining on Earth, 
projecting Earth's shadow on the moon and it looks just like this and I've watched this shadow come up to the corner get bigger and go across the entire moon and then go away. People you cannot have an, and I think this is called a lunar eclipse. You cannot have a lunar eclipse on a flat earth. Can't be done unless we manipulate the lighting on the moon or something like that. But how can you have a lunar eclipse on a flat earth? You can't. Okay, now just another couple of tidbits. Here's something else that I find very interesting that speaks against a round earth. I've looked this up and from what I can understand and what most uh, physics people agree with is that the size of the earth, 24,000 mile circumference, right? Doesn't matter which way you go. The curvature of the earth is, from what I understand, eight inches a mile. Eight inches a mile. All right. So that means when you're looking downrange 10 miles, 80 inches, which is six and a half feet, is below the horizon. You can't see it. Well, there's a place in Florida where you can literally look straight down the beach 22 miles with nothing hindering your line of sight. It is perfectly the most flattest place on the earth. 22 miles right there on a the Florida beach. Well, listen, there's a guy that offered $200,000 to anybody that ex could explain to him why he can put his telescope at like two feet off the ground and get down there and look. And his buddy is 22 miles away down the beach at the other end. And when he's got that thing, he's laying on the ground, looking through his telescope straight down that beach, and he sees his buddy 22 miles away waving at him. That is impossible on a round earth. Because if the equation's right, eight inches a mile, that guy should be six and a half feet down below the horizon. He shouldn't even be able to see his head. And that guy put up a $200,000 reward, and no one has claimed it yet. So guys, listen. First of all, round earth in a universe. People, nobody knows where we're at in this galaxy and in this universe. You know, they always say that the galaxy is spinning and we're on this one little arm right out at the end and they show you, you are here. People, nobody knows that. Nobody knows what any of the other arms look at. We can only see it. We're looking into the middle. That's all we can see. We don't know anything. It could be any shape, and we could be on any arm. Nobody knows nothing. They really don't. And this is something else I have a problem with around Earth. How many times you guys ever watched the space shuttle blast off? I've watched it I, almost every time it's ever taken off. Listen, that shuttle... When you watch it take off, it goes straight up into the sky like this, and then all of a sudden, after it's been blasted off for about 30 seconds, it lays over on its back and goes downrange every single time. Why? Why would you do that? If you take off like a rocket, you go straight up. Straight up. You don't go up for 20 seconds and lay over on your back and go downrange unless you're worried about hitting something up there. So people, listen, I am not convinced one way or the other. I do not know if the earth is round or if it's flat. But I'll tell you what, I have a lot of problems with the round earth spinning and mainly aircraft flights. So anyway, answer that. How can airplanes fly both east and west if the Earth is spinning a thousand miles an hour at the equator? But on the flat Earth model, there's no way you can explain a lunar eclipse. Because in order to have this, you have to have the moon, the Earth, and the sun over here shining its 
light on a round ball to make this, and I've seen this with my own eyes. So this right here, the lunar eclipse, is one reason that I do not fully believe in the flat earth because you cannot explain that to me. So any guy, anyway guys, that's where we're at. That's where I'm at on the flat earth. So uh, whether you believe in a flat earth or a round earth, just, just explain to me how aircraft can fly. And if you believe in a flat earth, explain to me how a lunar eclipse can happen. But anyway, keep your comments really nice, please. <laughs> So I hope, I hope nobody thinks I'm nuts, but I've been looking into this, and I don't know one way or the other. Anyway, I'm going to look forward to seeing your comments. So you guys all have a blessed week. Just remember, heaven or hell, you choose. Just remember, once you take your last breath, it's a done deal. Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? <laughs> That's not... Uh, an eight-year-old's question. <laughs> That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there, and and that's the way it happened. And, and if it didn't happen, it's nice to know why it didn't happen. So in the future, if we want to keep doing something, we need to know why something stopped in the past that we wanted to keep it going. I don't want to be presumptuous Buzz. here. I can call you Buzz. Buzz. Okay. That's a, that's a legal name, passport, okay. driver's license. And I am Uncle Coney tonight. Uh, Uncle Coney. Well, let's talk about this, because this is fascinating. I remember very clearly, I think anybody who was alive at the time does, I remember my parents waking me up and we went down and we watched you guys land on the moon. No, which you didn't. Was, no, you didn't. What? Because uh, uh, there wasn't any television. There wasn't anybody taking a picture. You watched animation. So you associated what you saw with... I have very hazy memories. Yeah, I know. 